Hello and welcome to Anti Skeptic. I'm Kelsey Almeida, stand up comedian, Christian, and now podcaster. In this show, we'll be discussing all the interesting and sometimes slightly weird things people believe in, from religion and vegan diets to asking the big questions like can we really contact the dead? Join me where in each episode I'll be chatting to an expert or a funny guest discussing a belief that's close to their heart. So, let's introduce today's guest. Welcome to part two of my conversation with David the Medium. Well, what can I tell you about this episode? We chat some more about David's psychic and medium abilities. We explore how mediums can be used as crime fighters. And I also get a spiritual reading from the man himself. I'm not gonna lie, I was umming and ahhing about whether to include my reading in this show because it was very emotional and personal for me. But I wanted to keep it in because I want you to experience firsthand what I experienced when chatting to David and what my first ever psychic medium session was really like. So, strap in for an episode that certainly pulled on my heartstrings. I also want to mention before we start this episode, if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe to this podcast and whatever you're listening to this on now. That way, you'll get notified when I release a new episode before anyone else. And if you're enjoying the show and would like to show your support for me and the podcast, you can do that by going to patreon.com forward slash anti-skeptic, which allows you to send me a monthly donation to show your support for the show. Thank you. Right, now that that's out of the way, we're going to dive straight into this episode with David the media i completely get that if you know you have your own journey i mean what would be the point in living if you knew exactly what's going to happen every single day and yeah what is right or wrong but why are there not mediums working for like the police force like turning up to murder scenes or people in hospital and they inst- you know you'd instantly know the killer or you yeah. have an instinct of where to find the murder weapon why is that not a thing it is a thing they just don't tell anyone <laughs> no way yeah i i mean i don't know how big i'm deep in, uh, we yeah i'm not really saying too much that maybe wouldn't be known i guess but victoria police does use mediums have you ever been asked to help i may have (laughs) to be very blunt i haven't helped in the murder but i did help find someone who was missing and for the respect of the family i won't say who that was but it was a missing person case it wasn't in the news this year and i did actually help locate them and you actually found them and i found them and it was based on your knowledge based on my direction they were able to locate the person based on what i said why have we not heard about this before? Is this just me living <laughs> under a rock? No, well, they don't, because there's such a, you know, it is such a taboo topic. Psychics and mediums, if, you, if the Victoria police was to come out or the government was to come out and be like, oh, yes, okay, so this person's missing, but don't worry, we've got the medium on it. Everyone would be like, well, that's fucking stupid. Like, you know, everyone would, you know, there's a lot of judgment around it. Well, not if you're correct every time. Wow. This, this all feels like the X-Men. Wow. They're worried that the mutants <laughs> are going to take over. But that's the thing as well. I mean, sometimes... It's, you know, it's not, the Victoria police won't necessarily contact people directly. I mean, they haven't done, I mean, in my case, they haven't done that. But, you know, when all avenues are exhausted, I think it comes down to the viewpoint that it doesn't hurt. Like, you know, what are they going to tell us that isn't going to be negative or anything like that? In the case that I helped out with, I was approached by the search party. So there was members of the search party that were actually clients of mine, part of sort of the SAS, uh, the SES, part of me search team. So they sort of said, you know, we're kind of all out of options. It's been a few days already. Like, you know, just tune in and let me know what you feel. And yeah, I kind of, I mean, I'm not going to take complete credit for helping find them because, you know, I didn't do any of the heavy lifting there, of course, but the direction that I did push them in did result in a positive outcome. That's got to be a great feeling though. That's got to be great. Much better than talking to someone going, yes, you're now and still loves you yeah, oh my you know gosh. Fi- actually finding someone yeah. is a uh, incredible achievement well, it was incredibly special like and for me it's not something that i even knew that i could do and i and honestly i don't know if i could do it again like i i don't think that that's something that i maybe could do with every single case to be fair i mean i guess i've never really tried but it wasn't something that i was aware that i had the ability to help in and i'm just you know like i said i'm just so grateful that i could because i didn't really ever talk about that either because i didn't want the, the fame or the you know the congratulations from it it was something that was quite personal personal to me but I'm talking about it with you but like <laughs> yeah yeah it's not something that I advertise publicly you know because for me it's not about that like it's I'm just glad that there was a happy outcome that's all that really matters to me how brilliant 
when you're sort of in touch with the spirit world, say someone sat in front of you and came for a reading, is it just sort of one spirit or is it a whole collection? And also, is everyone sort of shouting on top of each other or is it sort of a queuing system? Because I imagine, I mean, I'm British, so it'd be a nightmare just, you know, British people in the afterlife going, not after you, after you. And you're there going, come on, like one, one of you just say something. Is it is there sort of an etiquette? Yeah, I I do get multiple people definitely come forward. So it's really whoever who I'm reading for, whoever they consider they you know their close loved ones, which can be you know of course more than one person. Usually they do speak in unison if that makes sense. So sometimes they can also it sounds really funny, but they can nominate like a spokesman or a spokeswoman, and then everyone kind of speaks on their behalf. And sometimes certain people will come in for certain topics. So sometimes your mum will want to talk to you about relationships, but your dad will want a couple of work. And the way that I use it, sometimes it really is like a cue. Like certain people will come forward to talk about certain topics and they kind of take their place. And when that's next person's turn, batter up. (laughs) And have you ever got stuff wrong in terms of a spirit is telling you something and the person has absolutely no idea what you're talking about? To be honest, not really. Because I mean, sometimes things can get talked about that maybe won't make sense at the time, but then they can go away and they'll be like, oh my God, that's what it means. Or sometimes, you know, I can talk about something and they can't really connect with it. But the week later, the event actually happens and they're like, oh, that's what they're talking about. So spirit will never bring up anything if it's something that we can't really validate instantly. And for me in particular, like I'm very big on proof and validation and making it black and white because I don't want to leave any sort of gray areas for people. I want to sort of tell them this is how it is and this is what they're saying and have them interpret that. Yeah, right. You know, especially when it comes to psychic predictions and psychic things coming up in people's futures, it really is open to interpretation because spirit, like I said it before, will never tell us directly, okay, you're going to die in a car crash next Tuesday, la, 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 or you're going to start this job on October 17th. Uh, Sometimes they can, like they actually can get very specific, but a lot of the time it is open to interpretation, which is really where I use my own sort of discretion around it because I don't want to lead people down a false path or I don't want them to give them false hope or make them think something's going to happen when it's not. At the same time, I have no filter, so I'll say whatever spirit directs me into, but it definitely comes down to delivery and how it is interpreted as well. Have you ever had a situation where someone's gotten a bit angry with you because something hasn't turned out the way they thought it was or hasn't manifested yet when they wanted it to? Have you ever had that situation? Or you? Yeah, honestly, it, it does happen, but it comes down to the fact that I can say something and people will in, then interpret what I'm saying in their own ways. This has happened quite a few times, actually, but sometimes I can be like with relationships, for example, I'd be like, okay, you're going to meet someone in March. And then it gets to March and they haven't met anyone because they were expecting to fall in love. And, you know, oh my God, why didn't that happen? When in reality, they actually did meet someone in March, but maybe the relationship didn't develop even more until maybe, you know, like April or May or June. But they're expecting that person to be their soulmate and, you know, fall head over heels in March. I'm translating what comes from spirit. And then I think my clients really do translate what comes from me. So I can be, I'm only responsible for what I say, not how they interpret it. <laughs> right. Okay. You're almost like a Picasso painting. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm just the middleman. You know, so I'll say it in certain ways. And I, I'm very still blunt. Like I'm not going to leave open-ended things and you know have really broad statements that people can't interpret themselves. But I kind of feel like, you know, especially when people come to psychics or mediums, like they're coming with their own, you know, things that they want answered or the, the things that they see are as important to their life. So they're already coming with their own sort of inbuilt understanding about how how they think things will be already. And you said that you're not able to communicate with your own family or predict things in your own life because of you've got the the gift and the universe won't allow you to do that. But does that mean, have you ever gone to see a different psychic yourself to get your own answers? Yeah, I have. I st- I'm still looking for someone good. So if anyone good is listening, feel free to hit me up. <laughs> but yeah, like my mentor, the lady that mentored me at the very start, she was also a medium. So I still, even though I was doing classes with her, I still had readings with her as well. You know, I, I still love love to seek guidance within my own life because yeah, even though I might be a bit more intuitive and I have sort of vibes and feelings around things, it's always nice to have that validated or to sort of be given a different direction or to see a different viewpoint from someone else. So yeah, no, definitely. I still go to other mediums and psychics for guidance as well. There was one bit that stood out to me in one of your live readings that I watched and you were talking to someone and you you suddenly went, you were getting a a tug on your ring and you felt like there was a tugging on your ring and you asked them, you know, is there some sort of, is there jewelry missing or is there something to do with a wedding ring or is there a wedding coming up or anything like that? Now, I've got two questions for that. One, can you actually feel that happening? Can you feel something physically pulling in your hand? And also, why has that spirit decided to not speak to you or like, like not ask you that question in clarity rather than you know just tugging your finger and expecting you to guess what that means 
so yeah, as a psychic medium, I have the ability, to, as I uh, touched on before, to see, hear, and feel. So when it comes to feeling, it's kind of like goosebumps or tingles where spirit can use to sort of highlight certain parts of my body. And the reason that they would use that, so when they're physically pulling on my ring, like I just got sort of a bit of a tingle on my finger and then I could kind of feel my ring sort of feel a bit warm, if that makes sense. Uh, but the reason they would do that because they know that I symbolize rings with marriage and love and relationships. So instead of actually saying it, it's just easy for them to be like, okay, I'll just touch his ring because David knows what that means. Right. So again, it's all a game of sort of translation for them as well. So even though they can speak and I could show me symbols, they know it's just so much easier for them just to make my fingers feel tingly or to pull on my ring. <laughs> and also when you were doing those lives, you were, do, you were going from like person to person quite quickly. You know, you'd end one and then you'd go straight to the other one. Do you ever have a moment where you sort of log off or, you know, a person leaves? Do, you ever, do the spirits sort of hang around and you have sort of to awkwardly go, all right, time to leave. You know, yeah. you know get the hoover out, that kind of thing. <laughs> No, they're very respectful and, you know, they, like I mentioned, they know when I'm sort of done with them for a better word, but also at the same time, like they've got no interest in hanging around me anyway. They'd rather be with their family. They'd rather look over their loved ones. They don't want to hang out with some medium that they don't really know and they have really no interest in. <laughs> so yeah, as soon as I, as soon as they're finished with me, they just, you know, they use me and throw me out, Kelsey, they're done. Do you ever have days like your regular person where you wake up on a Monday and you go, oh, I really don't want to go to work today. I really don't want to talk to the spirit world today. Just it's, it's not always positive, is it? You know, people get very emotional and it's, it's an incredible gift to have to be able to talk to the afterlife. So your job is very serious. So do you ever have days where you just go, I'm just not in the mood? Yeah, I mean, definitely as a medium, like I say, I'm not only a psychic medium, but I'm also a grief counsellor and I'm a careers counsellor and I'm a, a therapist and I'm a psychiatrist. Like it's kind of all these little professions are all added into the one group. To me, though, like I love what I do and I, you know, I really see my ability as, a, an, as an absolute gift. For me, that's the most important thing of all because I, I know that it has such a positive impact on everyone that I get to sit down with. You know, I, I to be honest, like sometimes I can wake up some mornings and I was like, I, would I rather stay in bed and set my alarm for like midday? Absolutely. At the same time, I'm always so excited and I really can't wait to get going. Like I, you know, personally, I have such a passion behind what I do that I, I really just, I, I would do it 24-7 if I could. But no, at the same time, it can get very draining and I can have some really heavy moments and some really things that can be quite emotional and especially when you are sitting with someone that is you know, visibly upset or visibly suffering or really just quite down. So for me, self-care is the most important thing. Like I really do take time off to take care of my own emotions. I'm, I've, I, I, get, I think that I'm very aware of how I feel and how I interpret messages in general just in my own life. Uh, so I am quite self-aware in that sense. At the same time, I, I really do want to do whatever I can to take care of myself at the same time as well. So I'm very good at taking moments out and finding ways to relax and finding enjoyment in certain things as well. So it's all it's all part of the bigger job i guess <laughs> yeah right well mediums gotta relax as well don't they yeah exactly right i mean i and i'm naturally a very lazy person so <laughs> i'm not one for pushing myself too much <laughs> and does this ability to speak to the afterlife does that mean you don't fear death yeah it's interesting i i always did up until i knew that there was an afterlife while I'm not wanting to die anytime soon, I'm definitely kind of excited by it. I mean, like I said, I definitely don't want to do it anytime soon. I, I, I want to be an old man who dies in his sleep. But at the same time, I don't fear it. I'm kind of excited to see what happens next. And you know, even as we've been talking, you know, everyone's got opinions on the afterlife. Everyone's got opinions and beliefs about what they think happens next. But none of us know for sure. Like I, my word is not gospel. Same as it is not with a priest or someone who's Hindu or, you know, someone who may consider themselves atheist. Like none of us have the right answers. So I am excited to see what comes next. And I don't fear death at all. Yeah, because that must be such a almost relief because some people really do fear death. But like you said earlier, if you sort of know that your life is mapped out and everything happens for a reason, you have no reason to fear passing on. You know, the important um, distinguishment to make here as well is that we never actually die. The soul is going to be around forever. It doesn't actually ever finish. Like the only thing that dies is the physical body in this world, but the soul lives on. So there's no such thing as death. It's just evolution and we transcend. We evolve and we move on, but we don't die. And I think that's why I don't fear it, because it's sort of like, well, I know at the end of the day, I'm still going to be here. I'm just not here in the way that I know myself to be now. And do you think that despite your own gift and your own powers, do you think there are fake mediums and psychics out there? 
you know, unfortunately I do. And I think that's where a lot of people's sort of negativity come from because I think, you know, we've all had experiences or we've heard of people that have gone to someone who maybe just is a bit sort of fraudulent. And, you know, unfortunately I've been to people as well that I've kind of left been like, well, they weren't really the real deal. And it is such a shame because, you know, there is people out there that do take advantage of people or that they do sort of prey on them. And especially when it's grief, because unfortunately grief is such an easy thing to take advantage of because people are vulnerable and people are desperate. And, if, you know, if you're going to sit there with a crystal ball and be like, oh, I'm seeing your mother. Like, you know, if my mother passed, I would do anything to be able to connect with her again. So if I've got some medium who's like, okay, give me your kidney and $10,000, I'd be like, absolutely. You know, because I'm grieving because I miss her because I love her. Just because I'm a medium doesn't mean that I don't miss my loved ones. Like I, you know, I'm still got that human element where I, you know, I, I miss having them in my life. So you know, unfortunately, people do take advantage of that. Because if you think about it, it's an incredibly ballsy move to decide one day that you're going to become a pretend medium. Because even if I wanted to give it a go as an experiment, I couldn't make up stuff for an hour with someone that sat in front of me. And nor could I handle the excruciating embarrassment when they're sitting there going, that doesn't mean anything to me. That's not my yeah. mum's name. Those names. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it takes an incredibly ballsy person to do that. And yeah. And I suppose with, you know, your clientele and stuff and you as a person, as your career, it's those people that sort of maybe bring down the name of all psychics and mediums because they're given this false advertising. And that's what people make their judgments on. Exactly right. And it just makes me so furious because it's sort of like, I know that there is people out there that can do it. I'm, you know, I, I consider myself one of them. And, you know, as you mentioned, a lot of the those ones that really have the names because everyone is probably known someone who's been to someone that it's crap but <laughs> i think you know, as soon as you do sit down with someone who does have the ability and someone who's very open and coming from a place of support and love like you instantly feel it like i've had some people that i've read that have been like oh thank god like i finally found someone that was good i mean not to blow my own trumpet that they have maybe been to someone where you, i think you instantly know whether they're the real deal or not and it is such a shame because there's so many people out there that have the ability and i as i even as we were talking about before i believe every single person has the ability to be able to do it so you know all these fraudsters or maybe people coming from more of a negative place or you know completely run by ego because they want fame or they want money from it or they just you know want to sort of just con people you know the shame is that they really came from a place of love and they really came from a place of you know wanting to help people and wanting to be a positive force they probably could actually be a proper medium or a proper psychic <laughs> but they're just doing it because they want to take advantage or they want easy money or they just want to sort of build their own name but i believe that at the end of the day karma's a bitch and she knows where you live so <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> whatever, whatever energy you're putting out into the world will also come back to you as well. So if you're coming from a place of low vibration or a place of negativity, then you should probably expect that coming back to you in your life as well. I suppose that's just a good mantra to have, whether you believe in this stuff anyway. Just be a good yeah, person exactly and right. what you give, you get out. Yeah. One last thing. Is there any chance you could give me some sort of reading? I had a feeling this um, was going to come up because as soon as I sat down with you, as soon as we started recording this, I was kind of feeling all these little things. Now, I know that you're obviously got English heritage, but where's the Swedish connection for you? Uh, so my mum's side of the family is Swedish. Perfect. Because really, I haven't felt it really since we begun, but as soon as I kind of sat down with you, I kept seeing the, like the yellow and the blue Swedish flag in my head. And I was You're like, kidding. Whether Kelsey's got Swedish heritage or not. Now, there is a bit of connection here with like sort of wanting to guide, but there's sort of the main messages as well. Like, I don't want anyone to worry about money. And I know that's a really funny thing to say, but whether... That's something that you're concerned about at the moment. I mean, I really feel like everyone under the age of like 80 is kind of concerned about money at the moment, but it is kind of a thing going on at the parental level for you. Um, there is a bit of a reference here with the name Joe, Joey, Joseph, Josephine, something like that as well. Can, yeah, my dad's, my dad's name is Joe. <laughs> okay, Crazy. so with Joe at the moment is... My worried. dad's alive. I, yeah, as far no, as... No. When I started this podcast, my dad was alive. Do I need to end this <laughs> now? <laughs> I promise you that's in the physical world. Okay. They don't want Joe or they don't want like the Joey kind of sounding name. So if you can connect Joe with your father, they don't want him to worry about money. And it's not to sound personal, but whether he's like worried about finances at the moment or whether he's wanting to have a big expenditure or a big investment or something like that. But everyone's like telling him to stop stressing. There is a bit of a connection here with Spain as well. So uh, I don't know whether British people can travel to Spain at the moment. or I don't know whether it's something that your family does in general, but they really sort of bring me into sort of like the Costa del Sur or, you know, the Algarve, kind of like lower Spain kind of area. Well, my dad's uh, side of the family is Portuguese. So I suppose that's, that's oh, so where that comes from. Peninsula. Okay, yeah, perfect. Wow. Uh, and yeah, I want to give you something. I don't want to be talking about your parents. Like, let me help you. No. <laughs> no. 
there's a, I mean, I, I know you're obviously a British citizen, but they're referencing as sort of like, he can stay in Australia as long as he wants. I don't want him to feel like he has to go home. So my question is to you, and I usually don't like asking questions, but now I'm intrigued anyway. Are you applying for Australian like residency or citizenship? Because that kind of feels like it's going to be rubber stamped as long as you want it. Yeah, well, I'm sort of looking into either getting, a, I'm trying desperately to get a work visa, or I was thinking about even getting a partner visa. And my girlfriend has been sort of, uh, we've been discussing whether I should pay for a partner visa and then eventually become an Australian citizen. We weren't sure if what the legality around that was, but it was to basically have permanent access to Australia. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. So first and foremost, someone you need to know is like, if that's the path you want to go down, it's really rubber stamped for me, which is, you know, I know there's a lot of sort of legalities and a lot of kind of paperwork and, you know, bureaucracy behind it, but it's a real rubber stamp for me. What is the name? Like, um, I'm going to give you two names, like a Mary or an Anne or like a, a like, a, or even a Mary Anne or something like that. That's my mum's name. <laughs> okay, perfect. Good. Um, because... Now, they're referencing, like, asking Mary Ann for help on the visa, but I don't know whether she's ever applied for a visa or anything like that, but it's something about, like, uh, how she can help out or bring that energy in of Mary or Ann or Mary Ann. Well, that's interesting. Was she born in the United Kingdom? I imagine she probably was. No, she was born in Sweden. Oh, so she actually is Swedish, like proper Swedish. Yeah, yeah, both of them were born in, my dad was born in Portugal, my mum was Swedish, and they met in the UK. Oh, perfect. Love it. Uh, so in that sense, then, with any sort of visa work that they may have had to do to, uh, I mean, I know, understandably, there's part of the EU and things like that, so it makes it a bit sort of easier compared to Australia. But uh, if there's any sort of complications, it's not a warning, because I kind of feel like if you want to go down that path, it's completely locked in for you. But when it comes to doing any paperwork or any sort of visa issues for you in Australia, we have to sort of really rely on the parent story because they may want to know something about the parents, if that makes sense, because they're just sort of just drawing me to the parental energy view. I mean, I know spirits sort of give me both your parents' names already. So there's just a lot of things around the parents at the moment. <laughs> yeah. My question is, do you have a sister though? Because they're really bringing in strong sister energy. Or like, yeah, I do. Oh, no. oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. And is she in the United Kingdom at the moment? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Because there's also reference in travel plans for the girl next to me. Now, the girl next to me can be the girlfriend, but it can be the sister as well. Now, in this case, it's not going to be the girlfriend. It will be the sister to me. Uh, she feels older. No, she's younger than me. She's got a treble old soul to her then. My gosh. Because I would have said she was like, I mean, I know you're sort of in your 20s. I would have put her around my age. Like, I'm in my uh, mid-30s now, really. Oh, right. And she's a real traveler as well. Like, even though there's a kind of a few things going on there, I kind of feel like she really needs to spread her wings as well. So I understand, obviously, this year we haven't been able to travel. But she's, they're referencing really wanting to spread her wings. That could also be moving. So I don't know whether she's, how old is she now, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, she's 20. Perfect. There has to be movement going on around her as well, because all they're doing is packing my bags and moving the house, if that makes sense. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, she's just moved back to university. She's been staying at the family house during the pandemic, but she's a few weeks ago, she moved back into uni. Oh, perfect. Okay. So maybe so that's that can, it. Well, that can be one move, but I also want to put her international. So I don't know whether she ever has any plans to study in Europe or whether she just wants to travel after university. But for me, it's really a done deal anyway, because it really referencing will be good for her to spread her wings. Wow. But she feels like such an old 20. Like, I, I am surprised she's younger than you. She feels like a real old soul. <laughs> she's probably a pain because she's his sister. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Interesting. Uh, and... Yeah. Can I ask you a question and then see if that will triggers anything in your yeah, head? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So one thing that I'm struggling with is um, the decision on whether to stay in Australia for my career, as in to work next year, or to go back home. My issue there is I would go back home to work in the UK. However, every day in the news they're saying they're on the brink of a lockdown. So part of me is I've been offered work here next year in Australia for a few months, but that's a bit touch and go as well because you never know what the Australian government's going to do if the borders will open if the, the gigs will go ahead so I'm sort of struggling with what I should decide is there any sort of energy going one way or the other I kind of want to keep you in Australia for now I mean there's a real reference of just focusing on inner growth which has really been a massive theme of 2020 anyway for everyone to do a lot of self-reflection a lot of self-growth you know things like that so that really has to be your priority at the moment in a lot of ways it just kind of feels like whatever choice we make everything is out of our control anyway which is probably right given what you've just said because the uk i don't really see the uk going into a really big lockdown again anyway but it just kind of feels like the environment now has really shifted or it's a lot different to maybe how you would know it or how you would have perceived it already so for the meantime i kind of want to keep you in australia but the interesting thing is here yeah, like we're kind of more likely to have lockdowns here so <laughs> Yeah, well, this is my issue. It's just um, that decision because neither country seems to be good, if that makes sense. So I've just yeah. been sort of umming and ahhing on what's best for me. 
I think that's where they will reference where it just comes down to self evolution and self growth and self like reflection because if both of these options, I mean, both of them sort of feel the same for me anyway because they're kind of referencing a seesaw in my head, so sort of like equal balance. So in that sense, it really comes down to what you feel like you need to do. I feel like I want to say in Australia though, but there's also a very drawn, you know, even now they're showing me the West End in my head, so that's just my symbol for London. Uh, I'd be very interested to see again actually what happens around March. So did you say March already? Uh, I didn't say March already, no. I'm very drawn to keeping you in Australia in March, but in my own mind, I know that that's the, the comedy festival here. Yeah, and that would be the reason I would be staying. Yeah. But I was going to do the January festival as well, but it was March as well. Where's the January one? Is that in Australia? In Perth, yeah. I mean, yeah, who knows if you can even get to Perth, that's the thing. So Yeah. Uh, the borders for me will really kind of start lifting properly around December, like end of November, December. I'd be very surprised if people from Victoria can't go to Western Australia uh, you know, in the new year. Yeah, I'd probably keep you in Australia for now. Right. Yeah. Wow. Are you mind? So I'm just I'm closing my eyes turning down. I kind of feel like as long as we want to be here, we can stay here. Are you happy to stay in Australia for now though? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I don't want to keep you here if you don't want to be here. No, no, no. no. Yeah. I can't go. A medium told me I had to stay. Yeah. <laughs> And can I ask, is that my family giving you that information? My sort of relatives in the afterlife giving me advice or through you? Is that what that what's happening? Yeah, there? I mean, I, it instantly just came to me. But I was even wondering myself who it was coming from. Like, kind of everyone stepped forward at once. There's kind of the energy of the older female, which I know your mum is in the physical, world, which can sometimes translate to grandmothers. Uh, but my question is, did you ever meet any of your great grandparents? No. Okay, because they always are around us, but they won't make their presence clear to me unless they actually met you. Now, there's a reference of, I maybe might connect this more with dad's side, but there's a reference of like the girl, I, I dare say she's still in the physical world, but she's got a very strong O name, like O-L, like old, old. Yeah, o Olga. My auntie's called Olga. Olga, perfect. <laughs> okay. I was going to go like Polly what? or something like that, because I was like, oh, oh, yeah. uh, Olga. Wow. And is that dad's sister? That's my dad's sister, yeah. Yeah, perfect, because I'm all taken to my father's side of the family. Now, there is a lot of female energy that does reference her. Now, there's a very strong grandmother energy. I'm just trying to work out where that's coming. My uh, my my grandma passed away about three weeks ago. Oh shit! I'm so sorry to hear that. And that that was dad's side of the family, though. No, my mum's. Oh, okay, because she's really bringing forward the male energy on the right hand side. Uh, let's go back to the female side. So I'm just talking out loud in my head. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. So this is the very, I mean, like I said, very strong grandmother energy um, is coming forward. And, and, and sorry, did you say dad's mum was still here though? No, she's not. Oh, perfect. Okay. Well, not perfect. You know what I mean? I know what you mean, yeah. Yeah, because there's still I still have to reference like Olga being like kind of like the daughter or like the mother energy for Olga. So if she's your auntie, it would have to be dad's. Uh, and that's dad's actual sister though, isn't it? It's not through marriage. No. Yeah, perfect. It's uh, his actual sister, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Because uh, I was like, otherwise we're bringing forward Olga's mother from a different side of the family. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, mum's side as well. Now, that does make sense because it was the female voice that was referencing the Mary or the Anne. So if her daughter is Mary Anne. That would also make sense with the older female. Now, for me, your grandmother, it's this reference. Uh, she, oh, God, this massive hug from behind as well. I, even when we've been filming this podcast, have you felt tingles on your legs or like even up your spine or anything like that? Because she's giving me a bear hug from behind. Um, I've not felt tingles on my legs, but I have been fidgeting one of my legs. I've sort of been bouncing it the whole time. And I like right leg? I don't though? normally do that. My right leg, yeah. Yeah, because my right leg's gone really tingly, and then I sort of got a tingle right up the back of my spine. I, I mean, I think we even talked about this in the podcast, but when, when they hug us or when they want their presence clear to us, we can feel sort of tingles or feelings around us. Now, she does reference, this is mum's mum. Um, yeah. Like, I, she's... <laughs> She says, my daughter's too skinny, Dave. She needs to stop, like, stressing and put on weight again. Right, okay. So, I don't know. Like, I mean, I, I obviously can't see your mum, but, like, I, she's, like, slim. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, she's, yeah, she's quite slim. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, she is. Like, she's stressing too much. She needs to put on weight. Um, but it's, I mean, your grandmother, for me, she also references, like, the cardiness of the mind. Now, that's not to say that she had, uh, like, Alzheimer's or dementia or anything like that. But it's kind of this energy about, like, now that I can think clearly. And it, it's sort of this reference for her. She says, oh, but I'm so proud of him, Dave. And she doesn't feel religious, though. No, she's not. It's something we always argued about. She yeah. didn't believe in an afterlife. She no, thought when you she die, you die. We were talking about before. She was, she, sorry? Remember how we were talking about her, like how everyone has their own views on what happens when we pass and sort of like how does that translate to sort of pre-existing beliefs that we already have? Yeah. She really just took me into kind of like, yeah, I mean, I think you just said it yourself, but she really kind of took me into that atheist point of view. But now she's like, well, Dave, I guess this is real then. <laughs> wow. Incredible. So, 
that is where she sort of translates being proud with you because it's sort of like, well, Dave, he has his own views. He's on the right path. Wow. So I don't really even feel like your parents are that religious. No, they're not. Yeah, there you go. I mean, I know your dad's Portuguese, which you know, kind of is like, I guess, has a larger maybe Catholic population. But, they, you know, everyone up here, it sounds really corny, but they're really proud of you about sort of how you look at life and how you've sort of got yourself on the right path in terms of belief. <laughs> so it's literally the conversation we were having, you know, only like half an hour ago. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, she's like, well, Dave, I am proud of him. He's on the right path. This is right. This is right now. As I mentioned, she sort of has a bit of a cloudiness in her head because she sort of does reference the end of her time on Earth about sort of feeling really tired or not really sort of being consciously aware about what's happening to her. She also does reference that when she crosses over, there's the element of also being unconscious because she references not being able to communicate back with the family. Well, that's crazy because um, I wasn't able to be there because of um, the laws on not being able to travel at the time. Um, there was talks that I could fly there because you, you know, I, I'm British, so I am allowed to fly out. But yeah, towards the end, she she lost all, like she started to slowly deteriorate and lose her ability to speak properly and think properly. And then, um, yeah, that that she died around my my family sort of holding on to her and they sort of you know watched they were all there when she passed away so yeah maybe that's the reference to um not be able to communicate back yeah well that's the thing because i feel really warm but i mean understandably you know she'll be in bed it's not as though she's you know hanging out on the couch but it is this real thing about like i just feel tired and i i don't think that would be a surprise anyway no but it is the thing she says but dave my daughter told me it was time and oh, really? it's, there's, there's a lot of, this is the thing with Marianne. She says, I don't want her to feel guilty, Dave. She says, when I passed, she said, my daughter felt a sense of relief. And she says, I don't want her to feel guilty for that because I know it comes from love. Like she wanted the best for me. She knew that I didn't have to struggle anymore. Yeah, wow. And she says, but my daughter feels guilty for feeling that. And she says, if only she knew how much I loved her. Because there is a big element here of your mum also taking like care of your grandmother. Yeah, she was the she was the only one there, sort of. Not she wasn't yeah. the only one, but she flew from the UK and she spent every single day going to the hospital for about yeah, trying to really take care of her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for about two months. Yes, that's yeah, crazy. Wow. So it's sort of like I mean, I know that you reference your mum living in the United Kingdom now, but she says, you know, Dave, I don't want her to feel guilty or feeling like that she abandoned us. Now, has your grandfather also passed her? Because she's got a very strong male with her. Yeah, my grandfather. Yeah, he passed a long time ago. Perfect. Well, know that they are back together because she suddenly just grabbed a man's hand um, oh, wow. to sort of bring him in here. So um, she does call him a bastard, but the love is there. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so please let Marianne know that it's sort of like, Dave, I know that she would do anything for me. I don't want her to feel like that she wasn't there or that she should have done more, but she takes care of me. She was always there. And the main thing is here, and it's a very blunt thing to say, she says, but I don't want her to feel guilty for leaving, like leaving home. So if your mum was born in Sweden and then she's left, whether your mum, I mean, understandably, she spent a lot of her time in the United Kingdom now, and you know, Sweden isn't that far away. But your mum feels guilty for not spending more time with her mother as she ages. But your grandmother's like this, life i want for her i don't want her to feel like that she abandoned anyone it's sort of like you know her and i still stayed close today she says my daughter and i are so similar that sometimes we argue yeah that's true and she says that's because we are the same person i know exactly what she thinks and that's why i need her to know how much i love her but she says my daughter she goes she's stubborn she's stubborn yeah she is stubborn <laughs> she's um, so stubborn and it's kind of like, you know, your grandmother is the most casual, laid back, funny woman, but I wouldn't fuck with her at the same time. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Yeah, that's so true. That's her. Like, it, I just love it because I, I, you know, I obviously I know what you look like, Kelsey, and I can just see you in my head and she's just hugging you so tightly. Um, oh, she so feels sweet. like awful nothing. Like she's not a very tall woman, but I mean, the, the arms wrapping around you from behind. Um, and she says... It's such a weird thing to say from a grandmother. She says, but Kelsey, he should probably, like, I don't want him to think that he, uh, what? Hold on. She's referencing your legs. And she says, oh, he's got very hairy legs. Okay. okay. Um, but it's sort of like, he's been thinking whether he should trim them or wax them. Or it's sort of like, oh, apparently your girlfriend wants you to. There you go. <laughs> oh, well, she's not made that clear to me. So we're going to have to have some words after this. <laughs> You know, it, I mean, your grandmother's not one to judge anyone. You know what I mean? She just wants her daughter to take care of herself. So if she feels like her daughter's too skinny or whether she's just stressed and sort of like, you know, keep eating, keep taking care of yourself. Um, she says, but look how handsome my son has become. So the son in this case will be you. 
uh, and she says, you know, Kelsey, when he was younger, Davey, had, you know, he was always so beautiful to all of us. Like we could always see, you know, he's, he's shining light and he was always such a beautiful boy. But he worried about his weight as well. And he thought that it's time to get fit. And I'm so proud of him for taking care of himself like that because he was never a big boy. Uh, but he did uh, he did get to a stage where he thought that he needed to lose weight too. And it's sort of like he got on the healthy path and I'm so proud for that. Wow. So was there ever a point? I mean, I don't think that you've ever been necessarily an overweight man, but whether you sort of got to the stage where you're like, no, I actually need to get fit. Yeah, what well, I used to go, I used to go to the gym when I was a teenager and then I uh, I dislocated my shoulder. So I decided to stop, you know, to not damage it. And then it's um since meeting my girlfriend, you know, and uh, it really within the last sort of, year within the year i've just i've gone back to the gym and i've been sort of staying fit and healthy again so and i which i wasn't before i'd spent years just you know not being overweight but not training at all whereas now i i do try and train quite a lot she loves it because it's that it's that real sort of inner motivation and that inner drive you know for if there's one thing i can leave you with i mean everyone i feel so incredibly peaceful now i mean your grandmother just comes with the strongest obviously uh, dad's uh, mum is still there by referencing you know, her children, Joe and Olga. And then, did, was your dad one of two or does he have two siblings? Is there any other kids on that side? Yeah, he's got um, a few more siblings. Yeah, cool. I can really sense Olga and him. Um, nothing against the others, but I'm really sort of drawn to those two in particular. Yeah, they're um, very close. Yeah, and I mean, your sis, uh, she says his sister, so this would be Olga. It's sort of like she hasn't had an easy life, Dave, uh, but she is a good woman. And it's sort of like, you know, Joe feels the need to really look after her and protect her and sort of keep her company because she can sort of revert back to being a bit lonely sometimes, but her brother takes care of her. Yeah, I think they're just really good for each other. It's sort of like, you know, they'll really include each other in maybe even family events or, you know, if there's something going on within the family, like maybe Olga will come to it and maybe the others won't. You know, not to say that they're not invited, but um, I think it's not a negative uh, with Olga at all but like maybe sometimes she can feel a little bit sort of isolated or lonely but otherwise if, if you like, if there's one thing i can leave you with everyone here is incredibly proud of you oh wow and that's so if, that's so nice i think at i think at our age you'd probably hope so but your grandmother says she goes oh no dave the best is yet to come to you wow it's sort of like you know i don't want him to feel like that everything always has to be a struggle i don't want him to feel like that it's always going to feel like this it's sort of it's kind of like you know you uh she's <laughs> <laughs> they're just teasing you but she's like just drop the arrogance and everything will work out but then they all started laughing so they're just teasing you they don't really think that you're arrogant <laughs> wow uh and i should mention as well given that they are swedish and portuguese they speak perfect english to me so don't worry about that <laughs> yeah right yeah they do speak yeah wow guys hard not to get a bit emotional with um you know, with all this, especially since, you know, it was so recent, obviously, my grandma no, passing I away. I wouldn't be surprised if you felt emotion at all, because she's honestly just hugging you so tightly. Yeah, and that's another thing that she used to do. She would, she was so, she used to be, like, have such a thing about hugs, and she used to yeah. always, like, give really strong hugs and stuff, so that makes total yeah. sense. I mean, as soon as the grandmother energy was here, and I could feel it, and then we placed it with your, your mum's mum. I mean, she went straight in for the hug. Like, she just completely bypassed me and wrapped her arms around you. Uh, oh, wow. So, you know, like, yeah, she's just, she's holding on for dear life. It's sort of, she's just excited to be able to hug again. Yeah, I uh, guess that's yeah. maybe because I couldn't be there in her sort of final yeah. moments because I was stuck here. Yeah, but that's, you know, and I completely agree with what she just said. Because she says, but I don't want him to think about that, Dave. She says, that's only five minutes of my whole story. She says, everything else with him and our life together is what matters. And sort of like, I don't want him to feel like that he let me down or, you know, should have been there or, you know, why didn't he try hard or anything like that? She goes, you know, <laughs> she's very blunt when she wants to be as well, but she's like, what's he going to do? Just come and look at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. It's sort of like, it's everything else before that that matters. Like all the times that you did get to spend with each other and all the times you did get to talk to each other. She says, that's what matters. That's all I remember. Yeah. Wow. And Incredible. Says, now we have to pack up the house. Was she in a care home though? Or was she actually in a house? You're right on both counts because she yeah. got put into like a care facility that, you know, that they were all, it wasn't a bit, it's a bit different from a care home. It was like a facility where she basically just had 24 hour um, help, you know, just like in case anything happened, but it was like a small community. But the, since she's passed away, they've had to pack her house up and try and sell it. Okay. And she says, <laughs> she's, she's like, oh, Dave, now's not the time for it. But she goes, don't worry, they'll get good money for it. And I'm like, 
like, oh, good, okay. <laughs> well, that's uh, good to know. Yeah, I was like, well, <laughs> and she says, <laughs> she's like, if anyone asks, she says, just tell them I had COVID. <laughs> I was like, well, I don't yeah. think you did. But <laughs> Definitely didn't. No, that's the thing, because she just saw the references are slowing down. She goes, I just got tired. I just got tired. But yeah, please pass on her love, especially to your, uh, well, she says my daughter, so your mother. Um, it's so funny, because I thought we were re- literally referencing two women that were maybe Mary and Anne. <laughs> yeah. Not your mother, Mary Anne. <laughs> no. It's only when I said it out loud that I was like, well, that actually can be one name. Yeah, because I was trying to think of her. I was like, I don't, I don't know a sort of Mary in the family, but. Yeah. yeah when you, wow. Because yeah, because in my head I heard Mary Anne, and I was like, oh, Mary and Anne, because my mum is Anne, so obviously I just thought that you know the name it's would separate. be separate. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> They're all waving, but like, I would love to sit down with you properly. I mean, I can do it by the computer and on Instagram and stuff like that, but I always just find it so much more. Uh, like you just go at a hundred miles an hour when it's face to face, and it's just a lot more personal. I think I, I like sitting down. With yeah, well, I'd love to do that. I mean, that's yeah, it's crazy. Right. That's, this is my first experience of anything that's any wow, sort of. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I've never had any sort of communication and everyone see anyone. But yeah, that was crazy that you got so much. Yeah. yeah. The way that I word it, it's not as scary as it's meant to see. Like, these are your loved ones and they they want to still be around you. They want to still be a part of your life and they want to prove to you that they are there. They're exactly the people that you remember. You know, they've got, your grandmother has, she would look the same. She has the same personality. She is her. She's just not here anymore in the way that we remember. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that she's not there at all. You know, she's completely around. If anything, she's seen more of you now than she maybe has over the last few years because she's with you all the time now. <laughs> yeah, it's just so mind-blowing. I just sort yeah. of don't know how to react to that yeah yeah that's what i call my mission in this world like i literally just want every single person on the planet to know like your loved ones are right around you they're still there on your team they're still guiding they're still supporting you and just because they may have crossed over it doesn't mean that they've died yeah how incredible well yeah. david thank you so much for talking to me it's been oh my gosh it's been enlightening you know yeah it's um yeah it's been such a i've been you know like i said to you this is such a part of life that i didn't really think about or have an experience with even though i am sort of religious and spiritual myself but i've never sort of gone out my way to sort of uh, experience it it's been so interesting learning about you and what you do and uh, yeah thank you so much for your time Thank you. The pleasure's all mine. Thanks uh, to everyone for tuning in and listening as well. Where can we follow you if people want to sort of book a session with you and where can they find you? Yeah, so I am on social media, Facebook and Instagram as David the Medium. David the Medium, all one word on Instagram. And all appointments are taken through Facebook. So uh, they do get released in blocks. So the next release will be at the end of November for early 2021. So really January to April. And there'll be sort of a few wall posts and status updates in the lead up to that to sort of explaining how to book in and sort of more information provided there. But otherwise, yeah, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. (laughs) Thank you so much, David. Thanks so much, Kelsey. Take care. So that was David the Medium. Wow, what I tell you? I certainly came away with a lot to think about after that recording. I do hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening to this episode. Remember to subscribe to this podcast on your favourite podcast player. That way, you'll never miss an episode as soon as it comes out. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram to get first notice of future guests and the chance to send in your questions before the next recording. Just search for Kelsey D. Almeida on those sites. And if you'd like to support the podcast, you can do that by becoming a Patreon member by going to patreon.com forward slash anti-skeptic where you can send me a monthly donation to help support the show thanks again for listening and i'll see you in the next episode